he was telling um, a friend, his friend, about my story after they were talking how great a DJ I am. Because them time they may kill DJ left, right, and center, all on our runway, same way. See? And he was telling the, the person that listened, I said, the terrible as an athlete, do you know? Fast, you know? And the man said, Yeah, I'm used to run. And the man said, Yeah, man. This is a story about Luton and Stitchy. I am Stitchy. And this is how God took me from faith divinely, from being a track and field, you know, possible representative of Jamaica to representing Jamaica in music, dancehall and reggae. Okay, where do I begin? Let me start from high school and show you how the transition took place. I'm a proud graduate of the University of Western Kingston, Tivoli Garden High School. At that time it was Tivoli Garden Comprehensive High School. It is now Tivoli Garden High School. And let me just say that I'm extending the invitation to those past students out there to be a part of our alumni. We need the help. We still need to support our school. It found founded the base for us to operate from. That being said, as a student there, I was part of the track and field team. I used to run the 100 meters and the 200 meters. And after graduating um, from high school, I still continued track and field, you know, going on to GC Foster College of Physical Education and Sport. But during my high school years, I never had any coach while we were going to school during the latter part of my at my time as a student there, we never had any coach in the last year. When I, we, we, there was the year that we had coaches before, where we came fifth in the boys' champs. But the last year that was there, we were basically on our own. But I was running a very quick time, very, very quick. Then we went to the boys' champs at the National Stadium, and I was registered to run the 100 and the 200 meters. I don't know, I don't have any empirical evidence that it was set in this way, but it would appear as if the quickest guy in high school at that time was basically, you know, set in a heat of the 100 meter that they thought probably would have been an easy walk over. I have no evidence of that, but maybe that's what they were thinking. The fact that we never had any coach at Tivoli Garden High School, they probably thought that we wouldn't have the skills, you know, to produce the athletes, the athletes to, you know, compete with them on a very high level. And that guy at the time was Leroy Reed. And that guy was super swift. And when I say swift, it was like, like Superman. <laughs> it's extremely quick. And he was attending Campadon High School and his coach was the famous Glenn Mills. And Campanon was um, nicknamed the Sprint Factory. And so we had everything set up for the heat that, uh, that Thursday evening. We were running, you know, facing the wind coming up the 100 meter in the Thursday evening. It was very, very stiff. And so therefore, you had to be strong to get ahead. But I was always very quick on the blocks, super quick. That was my advantage. You know, I could go off immediately. It, this ability to go off with a gun. And so that evening, that was the same thing that took place. And when I left them in the blocks, I was way on the line. And then maybe around 80 meter out, came Leroy Reed with strength and length of stride. And you know, ran past me as if I wasn't going anywhere. <laughs> It was just the, two, the first two from each heat that would have made the semifinals. You know what I mean? So I was comfortable to come second. But he was ahead of me and I was in between. It was daylight between me and the, those who were behind, third, fourth and all the other places. But when the, when the marshal came and took me over 
to report my finish in the race. She said it was second. But the coach from JC, I don't remember his name at the time, pushed me aside and said, no, no, no. This, this is the person who came second and put in his athlete from Jamaica College and pushed the little Tivoli guy aside because there was no coach to defend me, to support me. He was the coach for Jamaica, the great Jamaica College running against, you know, Tivoli with no name, no coach, nothing at all. And so they pushed me out of it. I was devastated to say the least. And all the leader was telling them, saying, no, this guy comes second. You know, he overread everything that you said. And that was it. You know me? My world was shattered. Because I'm coming from a background where, you know, from Spanish town, St. John's Road, where we were so poor that we could even afford the OR and poor. So we were just poor. So my intention was to use my ability in track and field, you know, to excel and to go overseas and to study and to, you know, bring my dreams to reality. Of course, I had good predecessors and, you know, who did well, you know, Bertland Cameron is one of them, you know what I mean? You know, we, we were like a lane apart, we used to compete as a little youth, even though he was older than I am, you know, we used to compete in terms of sprints. We have different, it's a whole host of us, yeah? Um, so my feeling that was my way out of this poverty, you know what I mean? And here, this coach from JC put in this guy. I remember his name was just O Green. Put in this guy named O Green, saying that he came second. What happened is that they ran the semi-final and the guy never placed. He never made it through to the final because he just never had the speed. What, make things even, what made things even worse was that Leroy Reed, maybe he never anticipated that he would have been given so much competition in the heat. So he probably exerted a little bit more than he had anticipated that he would. And so therefore it placed his muscles under pressure. And so he got a pull muscle and couldn't compete for the final. So now he was out of the heat and the heat that we ran was the fastest. Yeah. Leroy Reed ran 10.6. And I ran 10.8 coming second. So you know is that is a is a good beat in that, you know what I mean? But nevertheless, it was the fastest heat for the um for the competition. And so Leroy read out of it. I was pushed out of it. And this guy, O Green, never made it through to the final. So I stayed home and I wept. I wept bitterly. My mother tried consoling me. You know, but it was devastation for me all the way because track and field is something that I love. It's my passion. You know what I mean? Not only then, but even to this day, track and field is my, is my thing. You know, some people are into football and, and cricket and that kind of stuff. Me, I'm into track and field. Yeah? In fact, when I went to GC Fasta, I, was, I am a track and field coach, a properly trained track and field coach. You know? And so that took place. What happened terribly now was that on the Saturday, the final, I stayed home and listened it on the radio. And the final was set. You know, it, it ran, and a, a, a guy, a strong guy, they were running in so, with, with wind assisted now. They were, they, were, they were not running against the wind now. And this guy called um, Christopher Stokes. Chris Stokes, you know, he won the 100 meter. I think, he, I think the school that he went to was Monroe. And they won the 100 meter in 11 flat. 11 seconds flat, won the 100 meter for the class one boys championship that year, if my, if my memory serves me right. And I ran 10.8 in the heat. And the favorite, Leroy Smart, was not there. So, you know what would have happened had it been a situation if I was given the opportunity and if the playing field was level and if they exercised fairity and, 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 and honesty, then, you know, chances are that I probably would have been the winner. You know, my life probably would have changed in a different way. But then I found out years later 
by a friend that I had. I was telling them about the situation, you know, that I had. At that time, I was heading, I was no, you know, a student at GC Foster College of Physical Education and Sport. And I was still doing track and field. And I was running the, the 100 meter, the fastest in the island at the time, at 10.3 seconds for the 100 meter. And I did not, I did not say 100 meter, I, I did not say 100 yards, I said 100 meters. And it was done on the dirt, on the dirt track. So had I been on the stadium, you know, probably would have been a much faster time. So I did 10.3 seconds in the 100 meter and 21.2 seconds at the 200 meters. And I was preparing and ready for getting ready for, for the Olympics. Preparing for the Olympic trials. And running the fastest time, I was confident that I would have made the team. But one morning early, I was up exercising, maybe around 5 a.m. And I was given the other athletes jump because I needed the competition. And they just weren't as fast as I was in getting out of the blocks. And I needed the competition. So I took it on. And I ended up getting an hamstring injury. And that was devastation for me. The coach at the time was Jimmy Grant. And he was encouraging me to say, hey, you know, don't worry yourself about it, Len. Let Len him call me. Don't worry yourself about it. You know, you can get time to heal and um, it will be all good again. But it wouldn't be healing on time for me to meet the Olympic trials. And so that was too much for me to bear because I was training for the Olympics. I wanted to make the Olympic team. And I had a good chance. You know, I remember that year, the only Olympic team was made up of Gregory Magoo, Alric Monroe, um, Raymond Stewart, um, Andrew Smith, and Donald Quarry. And they went to the Los Angeles Olympic in 1984. And the team ended up winning a silver medal. I can't help thinking and imagining if, only if I was a part of the team, you know, if I had made the team, if they probably would have won gold instead, or maybe they would have, um, you know, win the same silver. You know, it's in my imagination. And I'm, I, and I'm thinking on these things. And sometimes I reflect on it because I love Jack and Feet so much, you know, and um, I just kept thinking, you know, what if I had not gotten that injury? You know, or what if I wasn't cheated at the boys' champs championship? You know, what condition would I be in? You know, you know, what status would I have? You know what I mean? In terms of preparing for that trial, you know, what condition would be fitting for me? Think about it. But I said to the coach, listener, I get cold pull muscle. I'm gonna do my music full time. I was always doing music all, all along, never stopped. But at that time, when that took place. And, and, and I got that injury, you know, I said I was going to do music with full-time coach because I can't get a full voice, you <laughs> see And so I went into music full-time. I wanted to represent Jamaica in track and field. That was my dream. That was my passion. But God set it up in a different way. Here I am still representing Jamaica, but this time in music, reggae and dance hall. And the same energy and passion that I gave in, into track and field, you know, I'm giving it into music. You know, um, I went to GC Foster College, even though I wasn't able to perform as a track athlete, I became a coach and a teacher of physical education and human and social biology. And, you know, I'm still into, you know, track and field in a really serious way. You know what I mean? Try to get involved with the schools that I have the opportunity to share with. And that is my passion. But music turned out to be the thing that God wanted me to do. Because if I'd gone into track and field, maybe the age probably would have limited my length of professional career. But music is unlimited. You know what I mean? You know, so uh, I'm grateful for that. I'm grateful. And after, I was, I was going to tell you about O Green. Yeah, O Green. I told a friend about the story who went to Excelsior College and he was telling um, a friend, his friend, about my story after they were talking how oh, great a DJ I am. 
because them time they may kill DJ left, right, and center all on a run with a somewhere. See? And he was telling the, the, the person that listen, you know, I said, the terrible as an athlete, do you know? Fast, you know? And the man said, Yeah, he used to run. The man said, Yeah, man. And he told me about, about the story and he told a friend about the story I told him. And guess what? The guy that he was telling was the guy who was the actual person. O Green. And said his name was Orville Green. <laughs> and so he was surprised to know that this him said, I stitch him really. <laughs> get, get out. I say yes, <laughs> you know. So the man tell him, and I went. Tell, man, tell me about the story, and if I wanted to meet him, so I say yeah. Some went to meet all green. I mean, I mean, this guy who came third and take over my second spot like a thief. <laughs> so I went to meet him, and he was explaining to me what took place. And the coach is never him, and the coach sort out them things, and the coach them make them decision and do them thing, you know. But at the same time. You know, two things you remember as a child growing up. You remember those who do good to you and those who do bad to you. Yeah? So that coach, you know, I remember you and I'm talking about it. You know, I, I, I trust that you're alive and able to, you know, make, make amends. <laughs> you know what I mean? But um, I said to, to O Green when I went to visit him, I said to him, say, listen, uh, thanks, man. <laughs> Tell him thanks. <laughs> because I did that, uh, uh, took that spot, then I wouldn't be the lieutenant stitchy that I have to be. All's well that ends well. You know what I mean? Bless her. Peace.